How's it going Eliminators? Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to properly wire up a 12 volt electronic fuel pump. So let's get right into it. So you guys are going to remember this John Deere riding mower because this thing's pretty hard to forget. This is the one with the Briggs & Stratton Vanguard V-Twin engine swap in it. And it's back in the shop today because my customer wasn't getting fuel pressure. So the fuel pump was not getting 12 volts. If you'll remember in the video, and I'll link you in the top right of your screen, as well as in the description down below, when I tested the fuel pump, because I had to do some work on the carburetor to clean up the fuel shutoff solenoid because it was seized, I wanted to eliminate the fuel pump as a possible issue. And the fuel pump worked then, but if you'll remember, if you watch the video, you had to have pressure on the seat switch. So the fuel pump was rigged off of the seat switch. So you guys can see I got quite a bit of stuff going on here and I'm gonna tell you right away, it looks a lot worse than it actually is because what I'm doing is gonna be super simple. So the first thing was I need a source of 12 volts, but something that isn't strong enough to turn over the engine. Just for testing, I'm using my Eliminator battery booster. So with it hooked up and it is in the on position, I basically just wanted to see if we had battery. So you come over here and turn the key switch and the dash lights up, oil pressure light is on, and the battery light is on as well. So now that I know that the circuit for just basically the key switch being powered, the dash light, that all works. So the second thing was to see if the engine turns over and it did in fact turn over. I tried to start it up at my customer's house and it just wouldn't fire. So the next thing I did was I just pulled my spark plug cap there and I just used my gap type spark tester there and I went ahead, cranked over the engine and there was in fact spark. So 100% this was a fuel pump issue and I have a little 12 volt test light here. Basically this just lights up when there's a source of 12 volts on the probe. So with the Eliminator battery booster on, if I come down here and touch the battery positive terminal, you guys will see that the probe lights up. So it's just a simple light, that's all. But this is great because what I wanted to do was test the wire for the fuel pump to see if it was just a fuel pump issue. So you guys can see that the fuel pump is bolted to the side of the frame. There's no need to remove it. So basically what I did was I just wanted to essentially jump the fuel pump and, and just power it by itself. So the red wire, I put 12 volts and the fuel pump is grounded directly to the frame. So there's a black wire that comes out of it and then it goes back to where the fuel pump bolts to and you can hear the fuel pump working. So with the fuel pump powered by itself, it works, which means that 12 volts is not going to the fuel pump for whatever reason. So the fuel pump was hooked up via this wire here. So this plug right there went onto that end where the fuel pump is. And then the other fused end, which I've cut, that went up to this wire here from this relay here. So basically the next thing I wanted to do was when I turned the key on, I wanted to test to see if there was 12 volts in that line. This was before I cut it. So I basically just unplugged the connector there and I went ahead and hooked up my test lead right there, sat on the seat, had the key switch on and the light on my probe did not light up. So I thought maybe it's just a case of a blown fuse. So the next thing I did was a continuity test on this cable. I went ahead and cut it because my customer gave me the okay to go ahead and modify this the way that I wanted to, which is gonna be running the fuel pump directly off of the key switch. We'll get to that in a minute. So the next thing was coming over here to my continuity tester. You guys have seen me use this in previous videos. We're gonna turn that to the noise. And if I go ahead and test, you guys can hear there is in fact continuity in that wire, so the fuse is not blown. And I now have a good fused cable. So this fuse, because it wasn't blown, it means that the fuel pump didn't blow the fuse, which means that the fuse is, is good. It's not too small of a fuse to the point where it would blow, and it's not too big of a fuse to allow too many amps through to the point where it would do harm to like, let's say the wiring harness or the fuel pump itself. So I have a good fused cable that I can go ahead and reuse. So the next step was to find what's known as a hot wire when the key switch is turned to the on position, okay? And that's super simple. All you have to do is have a 12 volt battery source. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this on. And we now have 12 volts. So key switch is gonna come on, okay? 
and our harness, our wiring harness, is now powered. We're not in the starting position. If I put my foot on the brake and then went ahead and turned the key, you'd hear the starter try to engage, but again, this doesn't have the amps to crank it over. And just so you guys can hear what that sounds like, I'll go ahead and do that. Hear that? So the starter is trying to engage, right? Like the solenoids engaging and everything. So at least I know that the key switch is good. Everything else is good. So the big thing was to find a source of 12 volts. Again, we want battery positive when the key is in the run position, but also in that start position as well. And then we want zero volts when the key switch is off. And it's super simple. So the first thing we're gonna do, turn the key switch on. And I went around and I just started probing the wires and I ended up, you guys can see here, I found one. If we touch this wire here, let's see, get a good connection. See that lighting up? So what I'm gonna do is rest that up against there. So you guys can see key switch right in the on run position. We're gonna go ahead and start it. You guys can see that it does get weaker, but that's just again, because there isn't a lot of amps in my booster here. But the big important thing is when we turn the key switch off, there is zero volts at that cable. So I knew right away that that is the cable that I was gonna tap into. So now what I'm gonna do is just tap in from here, right to there, just basically relocating a wire, that's all. And to test my theory, I have my own fused jumper cable that is going down to the fuel pump. So when I turn the key, the fuel pump should have power. <laughs> there we go. And when we shut it off, fuel pump stops. So now fuel pump is hooked up to key switch. So now that I know that this wire here has power off of the key switch, and I do believe that is the wire that's powering the ECU or the computer, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and I'm gonna heat up that solder right there and I'm just gonna tap in my fused cable and we're gonna run it down and then he'll be able to unplug the cable if he ever needs to remove the fuel pump for whatever reason. So that's pretty much the electrical diagnostic process that I went through. Okay, so using my soldering iron, I used 50-50 solder because it melts a little easier, it adheres nice. And you guys can see I just used a paper plate so that excess solder that dripped off didn't get all over the wiring harness there. And just went ahead and soldered that up. I didn't use any heat shrink because I didn't want to cut it. So I just warmed up the solder that was already on that connector and added a little bit more to kind of splice in my own fused cable. So what I'll do is I'll let that cool, wrap it up with some electrical tape. Okay, so I ended up wrapping the splice up in quite a bit of electrical tape. I now have the fuse wire going all the way back down to the fuel pump. So when I come over to the key switch here and I turn it on, you guys can hear the fuel pump turns on. And when I shut the key off, you guys can hear the fuel pump shuts off. So everything is working as it's supposed to. What I'm gonna do now is because there's quite a bit of loose wire and I do not want a wire wrapping up on that uh, universal joint on the drive shaft there, I'm gonna just kind of bunch up the wires and zip tie it to somewhere that's out of the way. And then once those wires are cleaned up, then I'll go ahead and reconnect the battery and take this thing outside and fire it up. Okay, so cable management, as it's known, is super important, especially to me. I like things to be neat and tidy. And again, I wanted to keep my wires away from the drive shaft because that's spinning. You also wanna look for things if I can get a picture of it. See? that little shaft right there that comes out. So that's gonna be a moving part and there is a red wire that they've ran through there. I don't advise that, but I'm gonna to try to see if I can tuck that out of the way. But for this right here, I've gone ahead and put all of my fuses together here and I've used just a couple zip ties. So you cut the green big zip tie and it'll open up that entire loom there. And then you can go ahead and pop out all your fuses, but at least now it's kind of wrapped around the, I believe that's the choke cable. So it's out of the way. Nothing is near any spinning components. So I'm pretty much right ready to go ahead and reinstall the battery now. Okay, so we got the riding mower outside now. I'm gonna go ahead and fire this thing up. And she runs, runs smooth too. The only thing is when I come down to the PTO switch, so the engine dies out when I go to engage the mower deck. And that's because the seat switch. So that could have been why 
the fuel pump wasn't working because it was ran through the same harness that ran off of the safety switch on the seat. So the problem I'm having now is the seat switch wires that go back to the harness side have fallen through that hole and they're in between the green metal here and the fuel tank, the plastic fuel tank. So I can't see the wires down there but I've looked at the wiring diagram for a John Deere 318 and it shows two pink wires going to a connector hooking up to the actual seat switch. And because I know that my customer ran the fuel pump off of the seat switch harness before, I'm guessing that this is a relay for the seat switch and everything else, which means that the two pink wires are these two wires right there because this one was spliced in going to the fuel pump. So at this point, um, basically assuming that if I jumped those two wires that the more deck would engage and everything would be good but I don't necessarily want to go ahead and cut those so I might unplug this connector and then go ahead and jump at just the relay side to see what happens okay so everything just plugs into the back of that relay so I went ahead and just unplugged the cable that was originally going to the fuel pump we don't need that anymore and I've disconnected the two pink wires that I believe are for the seat switch so as long as they're jumped then this machine will think that the seat switch is engaged and then basically I can tell my customer that if he wants to go ahead and fish those wires back out from wherever they were it could have unplugged and then fell back in underneath this metal fender or my customer could have pulled it out completely I'm not too sure so I'm gonna have to give him a call but I'm gonna jump this just for now just to see if I can fire this thing up and then engage the mower deck and just so you guys know how I found that basically I just went to Google typed in John Deere 316 wiring diagram and it ended up giving me a wiring diagram for a John Deere 318, which I'm assuming is pretty much the same because on the diagram it shows the two pink wires, which you can see now, and those go directly to the seat switch connector. And on this one, I know that my customer had previously run the fuel pump off of the safety switch. So I'm assuming that I should just be able to jump those two pink wires and make the machine think that the seat switch is engaged. So something as simple as my little fuse jumper cable will work perfectly for this. Again. Works perfect. So we've located the seat switch wiring harness and like I said, being able to just jump that for the purpose of testing makes it a lot easier. So now my customer can be the one to go and trace those wires and find out where exactly they went. But for right now, at least I know that everything works. The fuel pump runs when you turn the key switch on, the starter engages, the engine has spark, it runs, the PTO engages, which means that the brake switch and the seat switch, even though we jumped it, works. Um, so basically now, via process of elimination, the only thing that it could be is, like I said, a blown relay right there, uh, or it was just a case of uh, a disconnected seat switch somewhere. Uh, so, like I said, that wiring harness is probably pulled back on the frame, and I don't want to have to remove this whole, you know, green kind of fender thing because that's a lot of work. So, like I said, I'll probably let my customer do that. So that's it for today's video. We were able to get the fuel pump wired up. It turns on with the key switch, and it also shuts off with the key switch. Everything is running perfectly. The only thing we had to jump there was the seat switch wires basically just for testing to get the PTO to engage. So if my customer wants to hook up the seat switch, it's gonna be super simple, guys. Those two pink wires that we ended up jumping, all he has to do is connect the seat switch to those two wires. And basically he can bypass the relay altogether. He won't need that because I'm assuming there's a seat switch built directly into that seat. So the issue that I had was, I didn't wanna spend a whole bunch of time to remove that whole rear fender assembly to be able to find those wires that ended up falling through that hole and then go ahead and reconnect everything because it would have been a lot more work and my customer is quite capable of doing that. So all he has to do is once he finds that connector, 
connect that back into the seat switch and then the wires that go from that connector, all he has to do is introduce those two wires into the two pink wires that I jumped for testing. And then when his PTO is engaged, if he gets off of the seat, it will ground out the coil, shutting off the spark to the engine, which will then shut the engine off. So if you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up, you know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week. So be sure to stop on by next week, check channel out for new content. And as always guys, thanks for watching.